Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Otis for Educators. My name is Cheryl Crawford and I am a curriculum specialist. Today we will be discussing web resources for ELLs. I'm being joined today by Emma in the chat. How are you today, Emma? Hey Cheryl, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Hey everyone, if you have any questions at all throughout the session, just put them into the chat and I'll be sure to get them answered for you. Great. So let's get started. So here you see our agenda for today's course. Today's course focuses on those web resources for ELLs and particularly at that middle school and high school level. So I'm going to be going into a couple of web resources that I want you to realize can be used for all grade levels, but we're just focusing on the middle school and high school today too. So first we'll discuss those English language learners, just a little bit of a brief background on them. On them. And then we're going to focus on interactive graphic scaffolding and particularly we're going to focus on ThingLink and Animoto. And then after that, we'll just take a quick gander at Idiom Site and Collar in Colorado and our resources. So those English language learners, um, many of you watching today are probably either TESOL teachers or you have some English language learners, L's in your class. Uh, and you may already be very familiar with things like um, levels of language proficiency and uh, et cetera. But if you're, you might also be a teacher who's maybe struggling a little bit with how to reach your L's and even at the higher levels, we have to realize that there are certain aspects about our L's that um, we may forget at that higher level. So for example, um, many of the uh, English language learners that may have started their education in the United States after fourth grade may not have had those foundational phonics skills taught to them because those are you know, typically taught in grades K to two. So even though you're a teacher at a higher level, uh, those students, as you're probably aware, may need some um, you know, pretty strong uh, intervention and reinforcement. And, but then the challenge is, is how do you do that and not um, make it uh, to their age level, if you know what I mean. Obviously, it would be a disservice to these L's to put them in a first or second grade class. You cannot do that for someone who is a middle schooler or a high schooler uh, because that would be detrimental in many ways. So we have to be creative and we have to use a lot of the resources that we have available to us to make the, those perhaps phonics lessons um, age appropriate. At the same time, exposing them to the other curriculum that your regular ed students are experiencing as well. So those English language learners, as I just got finished saying, is um, you're going to um, have them at a level where they may not have such strong phonemic awareness. Okay, And as I said just a moment ago, uh, if they entered the US after uh, fourth grade, uh, they may not even be very proficient in their own home language in their native language. So they're going to need that reinforcement. So that's something that I'm, you have to keep in mind uh, to integrate into your regular studies. Uh, it is a heterogeneous population, again, with widely disparate levels of language proficiency. So keep that in mind as well. And we want to think of, of course, those best practices and teaching strategies. Uh, I talked a moment ago about the placement, how it would be detrimental to place our, those L's in a lower class. That's just out of the question. Um, but you want to make sure that you create some age-appropriate engaging instruction. Okay, And that brings us to our interactive graphic scaffolding. Interactive graphic scaffolding. Okay, so first of all, our interactive graphics are anything that is uh, web-based. And I would like to point out that interactive, gra interactive graphics can be considered a multimodal approach or one, one of the approaches to support literacy acquisition for L's and for all students for that matter. So basically, your interactive graphics are uh, anything that could take the form of photographic images, videos, and illustrations that are embedded in applications like ThingLink and Animoto. They are a way to present data to users who visit a page containing animations, customizing, customization, and thereby creating a unique experience. So there's going to be that real interactive touch, scan over the page, scan over tags and hotspots, and it's just going to create a much more engaging learning experience. 
And that is what this box says over here, that they're going to be manipulating and, in and be interacted with the uh, program as opposed to a static frame. There's going to be those hotspots and videos and things that they can tap on and watch and interact with and create themselves. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about ThingLink, and then I'll go over to the computer, and I'm going to show you an example of, of a ThingLink that I created that could be used in the middle school or high school level. Um, ThingLink is a web-based and app-based program. It's a visual learning experience that augments images, video, and 360-degree um, virtual reality experiences by making them interactive and using that rich media, such as those links, text, more images, and video content. And those were those hot spots I was talking about. Hot spots or tags. It can be accessed on any device. You can share this out to your students on any, your uh, learning management system that you are using. And there is a, the good news is there is a free teacher account. So it is free, and it gives full access to editor and sharing. However, as with many you know, programs out there, the paid account is going to allow students to create content collaboratively. Okay. So, you know, in the free version, they won't be able to do that. So the paid account, which isn't that much money, I think it's something like $35, but don't quote me on that, I have to double check, but you get about 60 students, um, 60 students, and um, you can add more if you need to. But uh, the paid version might be a good option for you if you, especially in, you know, if we go remote sometimes, and you can have them collaborate that way. So there are so many things that you could do with ThingLink, OK? And by the way, these also apply to Animoto. So I just wanted to feature a few here uh, to maybe spark your interest and think of a way that maybe you can incorporate ThingLink and Animoto into your, into your lessons. So first of all, first and foremost, vocabulary acquisition. Uh, really, really a big one for L's, without a doubt. Okay, and I put here idioms and grammar. Today we're going to focus a little bit on an idioms example in ThingLink. You could prepare study guides for your students. You could even do virtual field trips and tours. And keep in mind, I'm saying you can prepare, but you can also have your students prepare these as well. Science-based diagrams and mathematical processes, quizzes, unit introductions, Interactive book reports or book trailers, we're going to look at one of those today, the book trailer, and we're going to look at that one in Animoto. And you could do some summaries, visual, visualize a process, okay, like maybe the life cycle of a frog or how a flower grows. Um, you could even do an author study or have your students prepare that, and you could also help prepare them for class discussions. So these are just a few examples of what you can do using ThingLink and Animoto, and I'm sure you probably have a lot more ideas, and if you feel you would like to enter them into the chat, please feel free to do so. Uh, maybe you've used ThingLink already, and you can certainly um, let us know how you might have used that as well. Okay, so right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the computer and I'm going to show you an example of how to use ThingLink. All right, so what I've done already is I've brought in a book. Um, by the way, you would save all of these pictures to your, you know, your personal photos. Uh, and pictures drive, and then you would just import them that way. So I brought in a picture of the book. Uh, I took a screenshot of it, brought it in that way, of The Outsiders. And as you can see, I've got all these little hot spots and tags on them. So I created this already, but what I'll do is I'll take some away, and then I'll show you how to do some of these um, so that you have an idea, obviously, of how to do it. So this is a common novel that middle schoolers will, will be reading, The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton. Um, you know, so as you, you know, this book would be difficult for L's. So there's going to have to be, of course, as you know, a lot of um, teaching before they start reading this novel. 
One thing that appears in this novel is an idiom, or several for that matter. And idioms in particular are going to be difficult for Els because uh, an idiom is obviously a phrase that's used a lot in everyday language that really doesn't make sense, literally. So it has to really be taught to our Ls. It, they could even be confusing to some of us. So what I did here was I created some tags. So I'm just going to hover over them and, and you know, showcase it to you first. So first I gave them directions. Okay, actually, this is just a, a, a tag that you can just create, a, you know, a static tag. And then what I did was I put a question mark so they would navigate right to here. Hi, class. Before we begin reading this novel by S.E. Hinton called The Outsiders, I would like to go over a figurative language called idioms. So here idioms I am recording my voice. People use every, in everyday language that do not make sense literally, but have a hidden meaning. I would like you to first look closely at the cover of this book and then click on the tags. Then try to answer this question. What do you think the idiom means? They looked like they were all cut from the same piece of cloth. Please be prepared to discuss your responses after you have gathered all your information. Okay, and what is wonderful about uh, thing link for our, our L's is that it has an immersive reader built in. So when you click on that little book icon, everything that was just on that slide is now here. <clears throat> and it would read it aloud to them again here. Now I'll just do a little bit of it. Idioms, phrases people use everyday language that do not make sense literally, but have a hidden meaning. Okay, and then what's even one more wonderful about it is that the students can hover over let me just go, you have the picture dictionary is on. There's actually a picture dictionary. And by the way, there's so many languages to choose from. I believe there's 60 or more that this can be translated into. So I can't stress enough how wonderful this is. Uh, when you hover over the word, okay, it would give a little picture of what meaning might mean. And they could also listen to it being meaning. said. Okay. See if there's a picture for some of these other ones. Okay, just tap on it, looked, okay. Um, and over here, as I said, you can scroll and choose the language. So if I chose, say, Spanish. <clears throat> Whoops, let me go back. All right document and it would translate it into Spanish for them and again that depends on if they're you know fluent in reading their um, their native language okay so that is an example of the immersive reader which I think is priceless and also what's also good about the immersive reader is that you can if you're teaching a noun lesson perhaps you can turn on that and that little toggle there and then all of the nouns are highlighted in purple now you can turn that off Verbs, all of the verbs are highlighted in red and so forth, adjectives and adverbs. So as you can see, this is a really good um, uh, software to use with your students or application. Uh, there was also syllables, so you can turn on syllables as well, and it obviously breaks the word apart into syllables. Okay, so you can tuck in your phonics lessons even with this right here. Okay. and also make the material more accessible to your L's. So that was just the intro. So I'm looking at this as a pre-reading um, activity right now where you're introducing idioms to your whole class and maybe you'll pull your L's aside and you'll work on this more with them. Um, what I also incorporated in here was just a, another stationary tag that says what idioms are. And then down here, um, you remember that in the idiom, the word cloth was in, the, in that idiom. So I wanted the students to cloth. have a visual. Okay, and then I typed in a, defi excuse me, a definition as well. And then they could go to the immersive reader, and there it is again. Okay, and it could be read to them here. Cloth, a type of fabric or material made by weaving fibers together. Okay, because they may not know what cloth is. So uh, a great way to bring in some visual representation and a definition. And then one other little thing I tucked in here was a video about, about how cloth is made. So the students would just click on that. Fabric is made from thousands of braided threads. This mill has 700 bobbins of polyester. 
Okay, so that's just a little bit of an example of how you can really um, preview a text with your L's and with your other students and really help them to get an idea of what they're about to encounter in this book. And then what I would do is, um, as you're reading the book and you come across that particular idiom, I would also go back to this and I would talk about that idiom again because maybe their understanding has changed. So here's what I'm gonna do really quick right now, is I am gonna just show you how to do some of these. So instead of taking these out, I'm just gonna just go in and you just click add a tag. Now, the one over here, which is just that stationary one, that's just adding a text label, okay? So you just click on it and you would just add your text label. And for just for time's sake, I'm just gonna write the word idiom, but you saw before that I gave the definition of the word idiom there. So that creates a nice little hot spot. Click done, okay? And there it is right there. Now, I could change that by clicking on it, change the icon, and you get a really nice array and choices of different uh, icons that you can use. So maybe I'll just do a shield. I'll make it, make it orange. It, you know, it's totally up to you. You could even um, bring in your own icons if you wanted to get really fancy. So that's just called a, uh, t um, a text label. Then the next thing, which is another nice hotspot to create, is add text and media. Okay, and that was, I believe, that was this Cloth. one right here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I did that one. So add text and media. Okay, I'm going to put a title on it. It was cloth. I'm going to put the description. So here's where I would write the uh, definition, you know, a type of fabric. You know, and for time's sake, I'll just, just, you know, put a little bit here and not everything, or material, et cetera. Okay, I would write the whole definition. And then here where it says um, to upload an image down here, you just simply click on that, and you would go to your own pictures, and you would already have it there, and you would drop it in, okay? Uh, or you can go to, um, I'm sorry, or you can go to, um, Photos by Unsplash, which is built in here. You could type in the word cloth, and you'll get some examples. And I'm just going to choose this one. Okay. Whoops, I'm sorry. And you could also take one, get one from the internet and drop that there. Okay. And then when you're done, you're going to click Done. And let's hope that that worked for us. Whoops, that was Cloth. Me. I'm sorry, that was my other one. Let me find the one that I just did. Okay. Cheryl, while you're looking for those pictures, I can again. imagine that that safe search um, image selection there with built within ThingLink can be really helpful, especially um, if your students are not familiar with what pictures they can take from the internet and what ones maybe. If you do choose to have students start experimenting with ThingLink themselves, you know, sometimes it can be a little confusing to students, especially RLs, about what exactly are the images that they're allowed to use and which ones they aren't. So with that safe search uh, image selection there built within ThingLink, just like you would see in your Google applications and other programs, that's really going to take away that um, need for students to know, well, is this image okay for me to use? Can I not use it? So I really like that feature um, personally. I think it's a good one to use with else, and it's especially going to be helpful when they start taking ownership and start creating uh, materials on ThingLink themselves. That's a great point, Emma. We always want to have that safe search, and you'll notice um, later on when I do the Animoto, I also use Safe YouTube for that search as well. I think that's always a good example, a good way, a good practice. So here we go. So this is the um, the one that I did just now with the cloth, and that's when you have the text and you have an image and you have the definition here. Okay, and though those pictures were right through ThingLink using the Unsplash. Okay, and then the immersive reader again. Okay, and again, I didn't do the whole definition, so. Cloth, a type of fabric. And you would, of course, put the whole definition. All right, and then next, we had a video. Okay, if you remember. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is show you how to do that. It's very simple, it's so straightforward. I love this particular um, application. So you're going to add content from the website. Okay, and you're simply going to embed a video. I already had one open up here. Okay. And I use Safe YouTube, as I said. I also used it here in ThingLink. And I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to paste it right here. Okay, and I'll change my icon. 
perhaps to, I used video camera before, let me just use a dot for now just to show you some different ones and click done. Okay, and there it is. Oops, I'm sorry, that's not it. So it didn't really put on right there in the middle, I'm sorry. There we go. So that's the same video the I used as the example. I just wanted you to see how to put threads. it on here. This mill has All right, so now the only other one that I didn't show you was um, the, uh, this one here. Actually, no, I did, that was for the cloth. But if you're going to do maybe a question like I did I here. Can't. Before we begin reading this novel. Okay, you can simply do that again with add text and media. So that's how I did that one as well. And you can record your voice. Just go into that one more time. Okay, you can upload your audio right here. Okay, so for example, um, I put the question here. I'm just going to put idiom. And then in the description will be my question. Uh, after you have looked closely at the cover of this novel that we are about to read, okay, uh, and the tags and all of the tags to get a real nice background on for that idiom, uh, you will, and I would continue typing and give them their, their instruction that they would um, have to answer a question and be prepared to discuss what they think that idiom means. And then down here, if I wanted to record myself giving these directions, I would just click on upload audio and I would simply record my voice as I'm doing right now. After you have looked closely at the cover of this novel and all of the tags, please be prepared to discuss what you think the meaning of this idiom is. They were all cut from the same, they appeared to be all cut from the same piece of cloth. I'm gonna click on the microphone to end that recording. So again, it's really a really wonderful program, uh, an application that I really think will work very well with your L's. Cheryl, before you wrap up on ThingLink and move on to the next part of our presentation, we had a little bit of chatter in the chat box in regards to um, the free versus the paid version of ThingLink. So if I'm correct, everything you're modeling today has been created on a free account. What yes. I was able to find is that unfortunately you can create all these resources, but you can't share them or publish them unless you upgrade. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I did put a link in the chat for any pricing um, mm -hmm. information. We can also include that link below this course video. But do you know anything more in terms of sharing? Is there a limit on how much you can share with students with that free account? Are you able to share at all? Um, so with the free account, it's my understanding that they are able to share a little bit. Uh, I think they're able to share only up to a certain amount. Uh, and that's why you might want to upgrade so that your students can, you know, create these um, thing links and share them to the LMS. Uh, but I do not believe it, it is a, a very high cost. So I do encourage you to look into that and see if it's possible for you to do that. Okay, so now at this point, <clears throat> now at this point what we're going to do is we're going to discuss Animoto and how beneficial that is for our L's. So Animoto is also a free web tool. Students can develop short digital videos that include music, photos, and video clips and text. Students can share their creations electronically. So now we're going to go over to the computer and take a look at Animoto. All right. So in Animoto, what I decided to do here for, to show you today is that you can take that vocabulary that you are introducing to your L's uh, as a pre-reading you know, activity, and you can create along with them a little visual um, dictionary. So I'm just going to play this one that I did for the giver, and then I'll show you a little bit about how to create that.
Okay, so The Giver is another popular book that you may read in upper elementary, middle school level, um, and you may even read it in high school. Uh, so what I thought would be good here is um, to, as I said, incorporate that vocabulary, and you can create this along with your students and then have them continue uh, along with the vocabulary and create those visual representations. Now, um, what's good about this is uh, your it's going to be used later in the next example for a video book trailer that I'm going to show you. But first what you want to do is if you see on the side here, I've, I've imported uh, several images into Animoto. So after you've created your free account, you're going to click um, and upload your images. Okay, And let me just go back to the beginning so you could just see a little bit more of how that is done. So once you sign on, okay, you'll have your account here, and you're going to click Create. And what's wonderful about Animoto is you get a really good variety of templates. So Animoto is template driven, and you'll get to choose music, et cetera, and all different uh, categories as well. So for my profile, I put educator. So as you can see, I'm getting a lot of these educational suggestion templates, suggested templates. So I'll just scroll down. And all of these, as I said, are stock templates. And then you just go in and you change your images and you change your text. So that's what I'm going to show you. So all I did was um, I chose one of the uh, book report ones. I chose this one, book report. Okay, And I'm just going to play this one for you just so you can get a, an idea before I show you how to create one. Okay, You could skip this part unless you want to upload them right there. I decided to upload them afterwards. So now what you'll see, this is the stock template. It takes about 15 seconds to render. So while you're watching this, I'm just going to explain that. Can you imagine what a wonderful um, teaching opportunity this is and learning opportunity for students such as our L's who are going to have that you know difficulty explaining and verbalizing their understanding of a book a theme if you will and the the nice thing about Animoto is you know it only gives you so much area and text to put on there so it forces them to be a bit concise uh, and that goes for all of our students too so as you can see visuals are, you know, they, a picture speaks a thousand words as, as, the, as the idiom goes. So this is a wonderful opportunity for your L's to show what they've learned. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the one I created. Okay. So the first step in this lesson as I envisioned it was to, I'm, I'm sorry, back to here, was to go over the vocabulary. So you just click on it. As you can see, it's saved in my videos. And I, it's, by the way, it's auto-saved, so you're never going to lose anything. It's always there. So here's what I did. Um, I took that book report, I, not the book report one, I'm sorry. I took a vocabulary template that was already there. I didn't show you that one, but that was a wonderful one too. And then I just went in and I started to change it. So the, um, this side, I put the image of you know, something that looked very atmospheric because I thought that showed an understanding um, of the type of book this is. And that's what you want your students to do. You want them to pick pictures and symbolism that represents you know, the mood of the book um, and the theme. And then I put the cover of the book here, and I put the title, The Giver. Um, so now, say we go to this next slide here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go actually over to this one. I'm going to show you how I created that one. Now, the word identical, um, if you're not familiar with the book, uh, the word identical and is something that is a theme throughout the book. Not necessarily that everyone looked the same, but they all had the same choices. They didn't have much choice. They had, it was very um, a dystopian society, and they did not have a lot of choice. So I used the word identical as a way for students to uh, choose a word that would um, describe their understanding of the book. And then they could even choose some synonyms like same, alike, and duplicate. And I simply just went into some you know, free uh, Pixabay software, and I just picked some free photos and downloaded them into my pictures and then uploaded them here. So say, for example, I want to create this slide here. Um, you get a lot of variety here. You get, um, for your text, 
and you also get for layout, okay? So let me just go to a blank slide and show you how to do that. So for text, I'm just gonna go with that one. I'm just gonna simply, it's so easy. Both of these apps are so, applications are so easy. So I'm just gonna put identical, and there you go. You can shift it over if you want. You could even make it larger, okay? And then all you simply do is drag over an image that you already uploaded. So you simply drag it over and drop it, okay? And it's that simple. You could change the scale if you wanted to, okay? And also you can um, add some more text if you wanted to as well. Uh, and you could change the background color. So say that was too bright, maybe I choose something, you know, oops, that's too bright too. Something a little bit more monochromatic. I don't believe you can choose, let me just go back and see if you wanted to do it more like that. You could, yeah, you could switch sides. You could even do that. You can add more images here. So maybe you want to drag over another image that shows identical, okay, and maybe another one. So there's so much that you can do with the layout here, okay? And that's, that's really all there is to it. And then what's wonderful is then you can pick your music. So now you can go up to here and click music. And this is, what is another great example for kids to, you know, um, especially for L's, to sort of under, you know, give their understanding to you of what they felt when they were reading this book. So you might want to present to them just a few. Oh, do you think that this, you know, was atmospheric meaning? And then go into that, of course, with them. Was it dramatic? Was it... Uh, was it, um, you know, a little scary or was it, uh, you know, a little edgy, okay? So then you would choose, you know, say atmospheric. And then what you can do is you can just hover over these and get a feel for the sounds. And that's a good one. Uh, keep in mind that down here you see the little stars here. That means that that's for the upgrade. So you can't choose that one in the free version. So I'm just going to choose this one right here. Okay, and you just double click on that. Okay, and now play it. So that's really all there is to it, but I'm sure you can see what a beneficial tool this is for L's, building their vocabulary repertoire. Uh, the next thing I want to show you that I created on here, again, using the giver, is what I was telling you a moment ago, the book trailer. How nice it would be to have L's um, after reading this book, and again, this is with a lot of lessons that you've done with them, a lot of conferencing, now they get to create what's called a book trailer. And you know with a book trailer, you want to try to entice someone to, you want to try to entice somebody to, I'm sorry, let me get out of that one moment, please, to listen to or to, to watch, to read the book rather, sorry. Let me just go back into that. So your students are going to have to really pick some interesting pictures here that depict the book. So I, got, I just got finished telling you that um, if you're familiar with The Giver, it's a very uh, dystopian society. Everything is perfect. Everything is chosen for everybody, their occupation. Uh, it's sort of a colorless world, if you will. Um, and Jonah, Jonas is the one that is, um, is given the job of the receiver, and he is the receiver of all memories. So here is just a, a little book trailer that I created, and I'd like you to just take a look, and then I'll show you a couple of examples on how to create a couple of the pages. So again, I chose that very atmospheric, spacey looking page because that's the feeling I got when I read this book. Now you see that made with Animoto um, uh, icon there or disclaimer, that's on the free version. If you want that off, you've got to go pro.
So Cheryl, just as you're modeling that right now, we did have a little chat in the chat box about um, the speed of that tr video trailer that you're showing right now. Obviously, when we're thinking about our L's, that processing might be a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. So is there an option to change the speed on those different slides? If so, can you model that for us? Thank you, Emma, and viewer, that was an excellent question. So if you look on each of the video frames, you're going to see a minus sign and a plus sign here. And that is where you'll shorten or lengthen the time spent on each video. So I'll show you an example of that here, where there is more text to read. Okay, So you can increase the amount of time spent on this video so that students can read it and understand it better. Excellent question. Thank you very much. So. Um, what I did here was uh, bring, I brought in those pictures that I felt depicted the feeling or mood of the book, okay? So pictures like the um, black and whites, and then bringing in a synonym, dull. I brought in that word identical again, okay? So again, all you would do is you would drag and drop, okay? So you're simply going to drag and drop your media. So I just did that, okay? And then your text. So say, for example, I'm going to do this one, okay, and my text might be something like, um, actually, you know what I wanted to show you, I'm sorry, I wanted to actually show you this one, so let me just delete that. I wanted to show you the one way, because that, to me, was an example of, you know, oh, the, there's only one way to do things in this book, we don't have choice. So I'm going to scale that down a bit, okay, and then I'm going to put in my text and maybe you might encourage your students with you know help them out with this of course and go through um, some language here with them everything is planned for them okay ah no pressure right you might discuss that with your l's wow that would be nice to have everything decided for me but then after having read the book Hopefully they realize, but again, you want, to be, be a, you want to tease it here. You don't want to give it away, and you want to say, that sounds great, or does it? So then you're leading the uh, person who is looking at this, you the teacher or other students, and you are bringing them to the end, and at, by the end of this little video clip, you're leaving them with this uh, feeling of wanting to read the book and find out more. So I'm just going to... Play that one one more time. I found these very easy to create, and I think uh, you will too. And along with your student, you could use this as, as your uh, a lesson, a small group lesson with them, and send them on their way. I found that L's are very tech savvy. And with a little guidance and support, you'd be amazed at what they can show you. You may want to give them, obviously, more word choices. Uh, you may have to definitely scaffold that a lot. Maybe give them picture choices to choose from. Okay, and then it just goes to the end, and I just wanted to show you the last. Thank you for watching my video book review trailer, and they would put their name. Okay, so really another great application, just like ThingLink, uh, using that uh, interactive graphic scaffolding that is so important for our L's. So what I'm going to show you lastly is something called Idiom Sight, and I would be remiss if I didn't show you Coloring Colorado, which I'm sure any TESOL teacher who is watching this course right now is very familiar with that site. Um, so let me just go back to the computer and show you that. So Idiom Sight, okay? Uh, it's a site containing a list of idioms in alphabetical order, and I put a couple of them here. And as you can imagine, some of these would be very difficult for our L's to understand. Hold your horses, raining cats and dogs. So you can take these idioms and you could also have a little lesson using ThingLink, using Animoto, and have them display their knowledge, represent their knowledge with photos and images and videos. That would be a wonderful lesson for them. Uh, so you're just going to click on Idiom Site, and as you can see, they're all alphabetized here. Okay, a taste of your own medicine. 
okay, a piece of cake. Okay, these would be very uh, hard for our, some of our elves to understand, even some native speakers. Okay, uh, chip on the shoulder, we all know that one. Okay, cross your fingers, cry wolf. Okay, that would come in handy a lot of times if in certain literature. So I highly recommend this site, and you could plan your lessons using that. I'll have that down in the resources for you. Okay, and last but not least, color in Colorado. Okay, that's that uh, wonderful site that is going to give you those teacher resources, grade level breakdown, support for L professionals, best practices and strategies, and classroom videos. Okay, so let's just go into that for a moment. And there you go. So you've got your uh, menus here. Okay, you can just tap on them and you're going to see you're going to have resources by grade, by state, uh, different policies, special education and ELLs. Let's not forget about that, that, group, of, uh, that uh, group of students and that population and their needs. Okay, school support, teaching ELLs. So if you're new to teaching ELLs, you can go here. Distance learning for ELLs, that's a great one. Literacy instruction. Okay, so you can tap on that, and you're going to get articles, you're going to get lesson ideas. There's also a, a tab for families, okay, how you can make some suggestions to families. Books and authors, so you want to you know, still uh, encourage reading for this uh, grade level, middle school and high school. So you want to do high interest, low readability books, so that you're still uh, you know, hitting on topics that are interesting to this age group. Videos. And of course, that resource library with guides and toolkits and more web resources. All right. Okay, so at this point in our presentation, okay, I would like to direct you to the resources page, which is where you're going to find a lot of files and links that I put in there. Things like the link to uh, ThingLink and to Animoto, some articles in there, and a few other resources that I think that you'll find helpful. Okay, remember that to get credit for today's course, you want to take the survey, you want to take the quiz. You need to wait until that take quiz button is illuminated yellow. You may have to refresh your screen and you will take the quiz there. Thank you everyone for joining us today for web resources for ELLs. We hope you enjoyed the course. I'd like to thank Emma in the chat and Brian behind the camera. And remember to please take the survey and the quiz so that you can get credit for today's course. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day.